Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. Some players have asked for a tutorial for my witch farm. So there we go. Now if you belong to the players who prefer to just use Light Medica, you probably want to watch the first 5 or 6 minutes of this video, because I'm talking about troubleshooting. So if your witches start to back up here, then you'll know how to fix that. So let's give you a rundown of the farm. It's a traditional witch farm with shifting floors. So the player stands 128 blocks over the farm. The witches are sent through, picked up by minecarts, shot into a water elevator and brought to a killing chamber. And this farm is pretty efficient. And I ran this farm for almost 50 hours in single player without any issues. The redstone rates are up to over 8000 per hour, which is pretty good, which is very close to the theoretical maximum that the farm can achieve. It's a bit better than in my last video because I optimized the clock here. But this farm is also pretty simple to build. It took me maybe two hours to build it, not counting the storage system and not counting material gathering, but still. And it's not high complexity, so this farm is a pretty good compromise, in my opinion, between good rates and fast building time. You can get maybe 10% higher rates if you use evokers and use mob rate behavior, which requires you to move evokers around. I'd rather build this farm. Now, you could also use this principle to connect two, three or four wood shots to the player. I won't have time to cover this in this tutorial, unfortunately. The spawning area would be the same and you have the choice to move the witches to the player either through portals or to have rail tracks connecting all of the witch huts to a common AFK spot. Now, I've heard pretty much two problems with the farm and one is that witches get stuck in the water elevator. So there will be a witch sitting in the minecart on top here and other witches down there, and then the witches back up. I had this happen a couple of times. This always happens if mobs get in here and collide with the minecarts. So the timing of the minecarts is thrown off. We have a rather slow clock here, so we send one minecart every one and a half seconds or something like that. So there's plenty of time for the minecarts to get away. But if, for example, a slime were to spawn here, and come into the farm, or even a slime would spawn down there, then this would be a major problem, because slime specifically will move even if the player is far away. So the player is 128 blocks on top, but if a slime spawns here, it will just start hopping randomly, and there's a rather high chance that it will get here and collide with the minecarts. Other mobs will typically be stationary if the player is more than 32 blocks away, but not slimes. So slimes are really a big issue. And the way to beat this is to light up the area religiously so that we have light level 7 or higher because at light level 6 or below slimes can spawn in this swamp. I also, just to be on the safe side, added a little wall here. This is a slab and a block over the water level. So I don't think slimes could jump in there even if they were to spawn. And here in the middle I don't use any grass blocks in there, so I replaced all of the grass blocks so no friendly mobs can spawn in here. So in my opinion this should be totally safe and you can see this farm ran for 50 hours without any issues. And now there are two other things that you need to be aware of. So first, the wall on this side is a double wall, so we have a wall two blocks deep. And the reason for that is that pistons become transparent if they are pushing. So this is just a very, very slight improvement of the spawn rates by adding the second wall here on the outside. But of course it also spawn proofs the pistons. So because otherwise stuff could, could spawn on the pistons. Now if you don't use this double wall, especially if you don't have these blocks in here, then it can happen if the blocks are shifted over that mobs can spawn here. So let's extend this piston for a moment. So these blocks here are spawnable and not in the witch hut. So over here all kinds of creepers, skeletons, zombies would spawn. And due to the shifting floor I've seen it that they glitch to the outside. So on this side it's probably not a big issue. On the other side that the rails are on this side, theoretically it could happen that the mobs fall down and fall onto the minecarts. So this is a double wall, make sure you build it this way. The other issue that I've heard is that other mobs spawn in here. Now 
there are two things that could be wrong. First, first here you see the biome borders, and this is mini hut by the way. It could be that the witch hat is not completely in a swamp biome. So if there is a biome border right in here, then you would get other spawns in the witch hut structure. So just make sure that the witch hut is completely in the swamp. For example, by using the F3, which will show you the biome. The other thing is that these spawning platforms are seven by nine. And let's go to the world before the build. If you have never built a witch farm, this is how you do it. You go to the roof and you mark the corners, but on one side there's a little porch and there you go one block to the outside. So here you are one block outside of the roof and the other blocks are right at the corner of the roof. And this will be the level of our lowest spawning platform. And then we will have two more spawning platforms, three blocks down each, like so. Now, however, the switch hut could be rotated. So if you just use light manica, you might have to rotate the schema for by 90 degrees. So if it looks like this, you see the schematic is for a witch hut that goes in this direction, but actually the witch hut goes in this direction. So in this case, just rotate the light manica and then align the highest spawning platforms with these gold blocks. So that's the way it should look. Otherwise the farm can be flipped to either side. So you can flip it both in the X and the Z axis. You can build the AFK spot on any corner that you like, not just this corner. You can build the rails on any side that you like, even the short corner, so this is all fine. But the spawning platforms have to be exactly in the seven by nine area. There's another thing that can go wrong. If you build a portal here on top, then zombified piglins can spawn and kill you, actually. So in this case, just place a turtle egg here with a couple of open trap doors. So all of the piglins will try to go to the turtle egg and just fall down and be killed. All right, so that's out of the way now. Let's start with the tutorial. And let's start with the building materials. And if you just look at the list of the schematic, this glass can be replaced with any building block, basically, but you might have to light up the area to make it unspawnable. The tinted glass can partially be replaced with building blocks, partially with stairs, like stone brick stairs or something like that. We'll get to that in a tutorial. The other stuff, you can pause the video and have a look. Now, you will need more pearlescent frog lights or other light sources because we need to light up the swamp. Here in the world download, you can check the assortment of blocks that I used. Now, first, you'll need some tools. Obviously, it helps to have a few sponges. You will need a water bucket, just a few blocks, any blocks to mark the corner of the witch hut and to mark spots like the elevator. And you will need one kelp and about two stacks of bone meal. And for the farm, you'll need a sword that has sharpness, sweeping edge, looting and mending. The unbreaking is optional. You will need, of course, a number of mine cards. One shulker box should be fine. You will also need at least one armor stand. A bit of redstone and here I don't try to get the exact amounts because it can always happen that you place a block wrongly and lose it. So I always take a few materials more. You can see in the material list what exactly you need. Any building block for the spawning platforms, any trapdoors to keep the witches in place. We need salt sand, we need a beacon. So in this case I have just used iron blocks and a couple of beacons. And here the building blocks as well as the stuff for the water streams. And optional, if you want to do the same thing as I did, create an interior structure here out of building blocks, then of course you'll need a few stacks more. The whole thing can be built in about two hours. That's not a tough build. Also, you have a lot of degrees of freedom in this farm. I didn't try to recreate the exact farm that I built in my last video because that's what you can do yourself. You can just grab the light medica and start building. So I'm more trying to explain why I'm doing stuff. This farm will in places look a bit different than the last one that I showcased. But of course the principles are all the same. The main improvement is the clock here. So we have an ether clock that will shift the floors roughly once over 10 seconds. That seems to increase the rates a bit by maybe 10%. And you can experiment, you can put in more or less blocks here. At the moment, there are 25 blocks in there. So maybe you can get another percent or two out of the farm by extending the clock or decreasing the amount of time. So let's switch to survival and start building. 
In this tutorial I will use the carpet and twicker roof feature accurate placement so I can place blocks in a way that I normally wouldn't be able to do in survival. This needs to be enabled in the server but it just makes the tutorial a bit faster and I also can place blocks in a certain orientation like so. If this feature is not enabled for you then you might have to work a bit more to get the blocks in the correct orientation. And if you don't use mini hut, which can outline the hitbox of the witch hut, then you should absolutely mark where your floors will be. So we need three floors for our shifting floors. And the highest one is one block over the roof, as you can see here. And the second one is three blocks down and another one, another three blocks down. So this is just under the structure of the witch hut. And witch hut can have different height levels. I believe they can be one block lower or higher. Or please take note of the lowest level of the shifting floors, which is in this case y equals 62. And I will also mark the corners, which are on one side where you don't have the porch. It's just the corners of the roof. And you go one block over that. And on the other side where you have the porch, you go one block to the outside. So this is the structure of a witch hut. And now you must decide on which side you put the AFK spot and the elevator for the witches. So you basically can take either corner. I'll just take this one because I have already marked it. And you go four blocks outwards in both directions. So that would be the spot. We can get rid of these blocks. And here would be the soul sand for the water elevator. And now that we have the AFK spot, let's start by lighting up the area. So write down the coordinates of the block that you are. So we we'll use the position of the elevator as the approximate AFK spot. And you will need to light up everything in a circle around the spot with a radius of about 45 blocks. And all of the blocks need to have a light level of seven or higher to block slimes from spawning. Let's just grab our trusty pearls and frog lights and spam them so that everything is lit up nicely. You don't need to light up the water. You might get a few drowned spawns, but they don't really hurt. But on the dry land, you have to be very careful to light up every spot. So the sliding up usually takes five minutes or so. And now the next step is to get rid of the water and I will build a few walls and I'm not going to be super conservative. I will, I think, go three more blocks to the outside. So the fourth block will be the wall. So this is four blocks in each direction. And I think on the other side I will go four blocks to the outside of the witch structure. So our wall will be here. So the purpose of the hole is on one side to block mob spawning. We don't want friendly mobs in there. And on the other side we need some room to build our redstone. And for this we need about four blocks on each side. And four extra blocks on the corner where we have the elevator. The hole needs to be four blocks deep. So under the lowest gold block go four more blocks or five blocks if you want to build on the floor like I did here. So of course it's optional if you build walls, but the main thing is that no mob can spawn in here. So we'll have to get rid of the cat, unfortunately. We are working with minecarts and if any mob spawns in the area and collides with the minecarts, that can break the whole system. And the next step is to build the kill chamber and the transport system because the spawning area comes last because we don't want witches interfering. But we will mark the lowest level for the shifting floors. So use the gold blocks that you use to mark the outline of the witch hut. So you see this is right under the gold block. These have to be nine blocks. And then you are seven blocks deep and you alternate solid blocks and soul sand blocks because soul sand blocks are not a full block, they are a bit lower. So let's just quickly build this up. And here we will have witches falling through, so we need to kind of encase this. And here you can use any solid block, of course. Doesn't have to be tinted glass. 
And editing Frodo says, so this has to be three blocks high or the witches should drop down four blocks from their spawning platform. If you build this lower, then you will have to lower the AFK spot because this is calculated exactly in a way that the witches just won't despawn if they hit the floor here. On the other hand, I place too many blocks here. You don't need to place blocks on the nine block long sides at the level of the spawning platforms because that's where the piston will go. But here on the side where we have the room, we will transport the witches. And the way to do it is to just use rails, like so. And then we place a water stream that moves the witches towards the rails. So on every second block, place a water bucket or ice and break the ice with a non-silk touch tool. Now we have a water stream that moves the witches towards the rails. And then we close it off by placing two blocks over the rails like so. So if witches are in here, as long as we don't send man cards, they won't see us. And now we will place the tripwire hooks that detect the witches and the blocks have to be one on the outside. So we have to place them here because the tripwire hook will only detect that something intersects the string. And now the string is on the outermost block where the witches can be. And we do the same on the other side. So tripwire hook on the outside and then connect these with string. And you see if you place the last string, then the witch tripper hook will just go a bit down. So you see that it's connected. Close this off so now witches can wander outside. And now here we wanted the elevator. So let's mark this just for a moment. And just to have a bit more room for the clock, I will have the rails go into here. And now we need the rails to go around the corner. And we don't want to use normal rails, but we only want to use powered rails because otherwise it could happen that the minecarts bump into each other. Here we do the same. We have the rails like this. And then put some blocks on there. And because we'll need to light this up anyway, I'll just use frog lights. And now this, the minecarts can't go up for any reason. And now we put a dispenser and a solid block in here to dispense the minecarts. And then we'll need a clock that is rather slow. So maybe a minecart every 1.5 seconds. So let's just use the standard clock with two repeaters and a redstone torch. And the total delay should be maybe something between five and seven ticks. Now the dispenser will be powered. But now we have a slow clock, which will power the dispenser on and off. And we can use a redstone torch here and this redstone torch will be on if no witches are waiting. So we just have to block this clock. And as soon as witches come in here, this clock will start running. And you can actually check this by putting in a few minecarts. And now if you go in here, you should see minecarts being dispensed. Right. Actually, we need the water elevator to, to be surrounded here. But we can use a solid block here. This will work just the same. And now let's just build a water elevator. And for the water elevator, we'll need one piece of salt and here, and then we just build up glass. And now you need to take note of the Y level of the lowest spawning platforms. So in this case, it's Y equals 62. You can also see it in the F3 screen, if you don't use any mods. So Y equals 62. And we will want the AFK spot at 185, 125 blocks higher. But we also need to build a few structures. So let's first go up to Y equals 173. And if your witch hut is a block higher or lower, then you need to adjust this accordingly. So just build this all up. So y equals 173. We have now reached level 172, which is about 12 or 13 blocks under our designated level of 185. And at this point, it's probably a good idea to just place an extra block and a bit of scaffolding in order to be able to go down to this level later so that we can build our storage system here. And then we continue to build up to y equals 185. 
And now we have reached that. So this is the level where we want our kill chamber. And you'll see in a moment that we will go two blocks diagonally from our elevator. So the player will stand here and hit an armor stand. And the witches will be on this block two blocks higher. So let's quickly build this. So we have two hoppers going both in this direction. And they're pointing towards the side where the rails are at the bottom. So we will build the whole thing a bit to the side and not over the farm because we don't want to hurt the spawning rates. We want a dropper facing towards the player. So this dropper goes in this direction here. And we have a cobweb which will make sure that the items are grouped to stacks and also kills the momentum so the items will fall straight down into a water stream. And then we have another hopper like so. And this is a double speed setup. This hopper pushes over here into this dropper and this hopper pulls out of this hopper here. So this can handle 18,000 items, which is just right for this farm. And we'll put a carpet on this hopper where we want the witches. And now we want the witches to stand here, right? And we will need to enclose this. And because of the carpet, we need to make this three high and just make put a roof on it. So what we'll do is we will have an activator rail here and we will have a powered rail here and we will power both of them using solid blocks from the side. And just use a lever and power them here from the side. And now we need to put more blocks on here and also put a block on here. And now what happens is this, if a minecart reaches this activator rail, then it will try to unload the mobs to any spot that is within one block diagonally and up and down. And this is the only legal spot where the witches can land. Here they would be blocked because they would intersect with these solid blocks. So if we send the minecart this way, all of the witches will land in here. Now the fact that the minecarts are below the hopper mean that they also won't intersect the hitbox of the witches. In my first design, I had these rails higher and they would sometimes pick up witches, even though they shouldn't, because a minecart and a powered activator rail shouldn't pick up mobs. But because the activator rail ended here, sometimes the witches would end up in here. So these witches have to be one block higher so that the minecart have no chance to pick up any of the witches standing in here. Okay, and now we just need to make sure that the minecarts will end up here. So we build this up one block more and we will use any of these blocks and put in a block of scaffolding. And now we can use either a bucket of water or we use a temporary block and create ice. And now we extend the scaffolding over here. And now the scaffolding is waterlocked because if the water is first there and you move the scaffolding in, the water will stay there. And now we use the scaffolding that we had down here to go around the corner and build us a water stream. Let's say we have a little drop shoot here. Like this. And now we send the items around the corner. So this will make a bend. And the reason for that is that, so we will have the items here. And the reason for that is simply that they will be aligned to the side. They will not get stuck to the hoppers. And now we can here have a water stream going to more storage. So you could here have all of your item filters and I'm not going to build this in this tutorial. There are plenty of good tutorials for item filters. Just make sure that you have two item filters for redstone so that you don't miss out on any of that. And one of the item filters for the remaining drops. And back to this position here, we need another solid block here at the end and we need to extend the powered rail here. And now we can 
also in case the witch is here so that they can see us even if they are in the minecarts. Now the head of the witches will be always in the glass. So even if they could theoretically see us because the player stands here, we can also put a block here by the way, but even if they could see us through the dropper for, for example, they wouldn't because the head is in glass. And now the player can stand here completely safely, swing a sword, and the player will hit all of the witches that are unloaded here. The empty minecarts will hit this, these blocks here. And let's go maybe five blocks more down. So like this. And now these minecarts will be perfectly aligned and landed down here, exactly three blocks away from the bubble column. Okay. So now we just need a clock to power this dropper here and we will use the standard clock. We will use an observer reading the dropper. We will have a piston going up here. This is powered by quasi connectivity. And now we have observer facing each other. So this one looks there, the other one looks away. And if something is in here, the clock runs. This is also a double speed setup. And the items will fall down and land in this water stream here. And that's the killing chamber done. And we are almost done. Now we'll probably replace this with a solid block so that the player is not hit by phantoms. The player will stand here and hit the armor stand. Now we need just a little platform to stand on. And it kind of makes sense to have a portal here to have easy access to the farm. So I just have my nether portal here. And then let's build a little piglin trap. So you can just go out maybe two blocks here and place a turtle egg here and then have one trapdoor go this way. The other trapdoor go this way. Now open both trapdoors and now the piglins that spawn in the portal will see the turtle eggs. They think they can walk over the trapdoors, they will just fall down. And in this case, there are solid blocks below, so they will just die. But even if they would be in water, they would despawn just shortly after falling down. You don't really need to do anything to kill them. And then we light the portal. Now we must convert the falling water in the water elevator into water sources. And for this we'll use the old kelp and bone meal trick. So just go down to the bottom, plant one kelp on the soul sand, and then bone meal until you can bone meal no more. This will take about two stacks of bone meal. So once it reaches the scaffolding on top, we will convert all of the water under the scaffolding into water sources and the scaffolding itself was a water source, so all is good there. Okay, so now break the kelp. And now if you put something in, you have created an elevator. And now we need to break the minecarts and feed them back into this dispenser here. And we can have the minecarts come down one block after this block here. So on top, our drop shoot moves the minecarts two blocks away from the center of the elevator. And now this is editing Fruno from the future. So what we need is a buffer for the minecarts. So we will just have one hopper going into the dispenser. Then we can put a chest and, or a barrel on top. And then we have two more hoppers. So one going into the chest, the other one going into the first hopper. And now let's put a cauldron on the second hopper and put lava in. So this can break minecarts. Then we will have just one powered rail, but we want this rail to be sloped. So we need to go one block up. We will have another solid block here that we power using a lever. And now you put in the rails. And now any minecart that will be placed here on this track will start to go towards the cauldron, will be broken and go into this chest here. And that's precisely the point where the minecarts fall down. Okay, and let's return to the past. And now we are ready to test if the system works. For example, by just removing this redstone torch for a moment, so that a couple of minecarts get dispensed. And all right, there was a problem. That was pretty stupid of me. If you have a block like this, then the minecart can go down a slope, but we can fix this in this case, for example, by just placing another block here and then just using a sign or something like that and then repairing the clock over there. So let's try again. 
So we're sending two minecarts and they go up the elevator and they should return in a moment to this track. There we go. So now let's build the spawning platforms. And we already built the lowest one. And now we'll place the pistons here. And we need two blocks to the outside. And one side, the pistons will be adjacent to the spawning platforms, like so. And this has to be this side. Because we need another row of blocks where we power the pistons. And this row can't be over this rail. So we'll have the close pistons here on this side. And then we go one block to the outside and have pistons here. So what we want is that first these pistons push and then these pistons push back. And we again use another row of blocks. These have to be solid blocks and we use redstone dust to power these pistons. Okay. And now we need to build up the outer wall and the trapdoors. And I think you can place the trapdoors on the floor, which might be easier than my first wall download. So you can just go like this. It's just important that they are all on the same side. So these trapdoors prevent the witches from just moving back and forth. And now we need to build the outer wall. And from this level on, you can either use tinted glass, or if you don't use tinted glass, you probably want to use stairs like so, because these are not f full blocks. So they won't prevent pack spawning. If you use full blocks here, then you will get a bit less spawns. Maybe it's only 10% or so, but it's 10% that you can easily get. We'll use a double wall on this side where we have the gap distance between the pistons. So we do a double wall here and just two high. And then another two high wall on the outside. And here we have a normal wall, two high. All the way around. So if we close this up, we will have light level zero. And then comes the next, next spawning platform. And we just repeat this procedure for the next two levels. Pistons, redstone and walls. And the trapdoors, of course, on the same side as we did on the first level. And now we just close the roof. And if you check inside, then you should see a light level of zero everywhere. And here in mini hut, the red borders mean that there's no skylight either. I have also encased the pistons like so, because these pistons will become transparent if they are extended. So this way there is no light, regardless of the state of the piston. And now all we need to do is to put in the control for the shifting floor. What we'll do, is we just want a short pulse, like an observer pulse, so that the pistons will be shifted. And let's say we have a node block that is updated. And then the piston, then all of the blocks are moved over. And now we need a delay. And this delay can be created using observers as well. So if we just place three observers like so, and then use a rail to transmit the signal and have another observer going in here. Then we have a delay of precisely three redstone ticks or 0 0.3 seconds between the pistons. So what happens if we hit the node block, the pistons will be shifted over and immediately shifted back. So that's what we want. If we make it shorter, then these pistons will not be able to push back. If we make it longer, we hurt the rate of the farm. So this is the optimal timing. And now we need to repeat this for the three levels. Let's do the same here and here.
And now we just need to activate them in a way that first the topmost floors are shifting, the witches fall through, then we need some delay because the witches need time to land. Then we will shift this floor and again after a short time we will shift the last floor. So that a witch that spawns at the top will immediately fall through to the bottom. The timing that appears optimal to me is a delay of 6 redstone ticks or 0.6 seconds. And one way to achieve this is just by spending a few more observers. For example, we can an observer watch this block here. So we are counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You can watch this. Looking good. And we did the same thing here. And that's it for the delay. Now if we hit the topmost floor, then all of the floors will shift. And all we need is a clock that fires in the correct interval. And we'll use an ether clock. And we will use an observer that goes in here. And we will have the redstone block moving back and forth here. So what we need to do is we go two blocks in one direction and three blocks on the other, let's say three blocks here, two blocks here. And then we build our ether clock. So this would be the redstone block that is pushed back and forth. We have redstone at the corners. We have solid blocks on the other corners. We have hoppers in the middle facing into each other. And we have comparators on the outside. And now the logic is each item that we put in here will extend the clock by 0.4 seconds. So if we want a clock that goes 10 seconds, then we put in 25 items. So let's maybe do this. That sounds like a pretty good interval. And now we can observe and hopefully every 10 seconds the floors will shift. Looking good. Now composters on the hoppers to reduce lag. And now the last thing that we can do and that will improve the spawning rates just a bit is a pack spawning optimization. You want to have this pack spawning optimization at the level of the highest spawning platforms. And you want to go out maybe two or three blocks to the outside. So what we could do here, we already have these blocks here. So we go another two blocks. And now we have a pack spawning roof of four blocks. So the pack spawning, if the pack spawning attempts here, it might be that the witches wander to the middle. So that's cool. And let's do the same here. Here we are on already three blocks away. So you can make this a bit larger, but it won't have a big influence on the rates. In my experiments, the rates gain was maybe 5%. But again, it's another 5% that are easily obtained. So let's just do this on all sides. Like so. For the pack spawning optimization, make sure that the mine counts can still fall through. So you don't close this roof here. We want maybe a lever here so that we can stop the clock if we want to. And one more thing that we need to do, we need to spawn proof these blocks. There's one way to have them light level seven or higher so no slimes can spawn. But in theory, a friendly mob could still jump in here out of the water, I don't know. So maybe we'll just use slabs to spawn proof this. And at this time, make a wall that is a bit higher. It won't stop frogs, but I don't think frogs are a problem in this farm. Now we don't use any grass in here, so we have eliminated all of the grass blocks. So no friendly mobs can spawn in here, which is also important. And now the last thing that we need to do is a regeneration beacon. Because otherwise, if we stand here indefinitely, then we will eventually starve. Because if you hit an armor stand, then you can't eat at the same time. So what you can do for other farms is that you hold food in your offhand, will not work. If you have food in the offhand and you're facing an armor stand, then nothing happens. So let's quickly build a beacon again. Do not build it over the farm. And we will have two beacons here.
And now we can stand here indefinitely and I will just put an item frame here so that when I'm done with the farm I can put the sword here and leave it. The sword has sweeping edge, sharpness and looting and mending of course. Unbreaking is not really necessary. We already have some witches in here, very good. And now just put in the minecarts here. And as long as you haven't enabled the clock, the witches won't fall through, so you're perfectly safe here. So to run the farm, just turn on the clock. Hopefully the witches will fall through and be sent up. And then go up to the AFK spot. Now it's probably a good idea to put all your belongings in a container, grab the sword, fill your inventory, like so. Go here, look down and enable your favorite auto clicker. And that's the farm done. So I know these tutorials are always tricky because some of you will already know a lot of the stuff. For others it might have been a bit too fast. So please let me know if you found this tutorial helpful and if you have any more questions. Otherwise leave a like if you want to see more content like this and please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. See you next time. Bye bye.